this is a very good subject. Now, I'll try to rein myself in and not take too much time on this, but I found tons of information about epilepsy seizure coding. The question says, can I get opinions on the correct diagnosis coding for seizures in an epileptic patient if final diagnosis code is seizure, but the patient also has epilepsy? Should you code to 780.39 or go to the 345 uh, series of codes? Well, I found a, an amazing uh, study by this Dr. Barkley, who is the president or vice president of the National Association of Epilepsy Center. Uh, it, it was truly, uh, he, he knew how to code, so that was obvious and, and that was uh, very helpful when I wanted to explain this. Uh, we'll, we'll start at the beginning, seizures. So if you code a seizure at 780.39, what are you looking at? You're looking at proximal behavior spells uh, and that's a seizure is usually caused by excessive disorderly discharge of that cortical nerve in uh, cells in the brain. Okay, so an epileptic seizure can be clinically undetectable. That means they they um, they uh, ep electrographic seizures, and they can be convulsions. All right. So if we slide down a little bit. We'll see that uh, the signs and symptoms are going to be uh, varied. They depend on first what part of the brain is is um, being affected. Uh, there's, I could have pulled out all kinds of pictures of different uh, type of things that they ask when a seizure uh, happens where they have tonic clonic seizures where you have lots of movement. My son has epilepsy and he has tonic clonic seizures when he has one. And then they have others that are just maybe a staring spell. And the thing about that is, you know, sometimes people have seizures and you don't even know, but because they mostly last less than one minute right? Tonic clonics don't usually, they usually can last a little bit longer, but, but you know, someone could have a seizure, uh, especially in children. You may not ever know it because it just may look like they're looking out the window. Okay, so going on down, uh, talking more about, not signs and symptoms, let's talk about epilepsy. That's three, four, five, right? That's where we're talking about absolute, uh, actually epilepsy. A syndrome or two are more unprovoked or recurrent seizures on more than one occasion. That's how they determine that a person has epilepsy. So you ultimately don't have a reason to have a seizure. So if you have a seizure, one of the things they're going to check is check to see if you have a fever, a fever, because in children they're usually febrile seizures. That's what it was caused by. And um, or they maybe they uh, have an infection. Do they have a UTI? You know, something like that. What what could is there something that could have caused the person to have a seizure and being sick? Uh, another thing that they'll check, especially if you have a uh, state that you have a headache, they'll do a spinal tap and make sure that there's nothing going on in there because you don't, definitely don't want to have meningitis or something that would cause a seizure. Uh, and then catheterizations, uh, behavior, uh, characterization, excuse me, uh, behavior during the seizure, how your body reacts tells them a lot about uh, whether, it, what type of a seizure it was and if it is um, possibly epilepsy. The age of onset. Okay, for an example, children will have fevers a lot of or excuse me, they'll have fevers, but they'll have seizures a lot of time when they go to sleep. And um, like when they're sick and they get an, a really bad in, ear infection, they run a really high fever and they might have a seizure. And uh, so if it was something that happened as a child, they don't think much of it. Honestly, it's not, I don't want to say it's not scary, but it's not as much of a concern. Even if they have more than one, if they can, t they, they can link it to a fever or an infection or a reason, but if they have no reason to link it, that's when it turns into to epilepsy. So the age of onset, you know, did it happen as an adult? Did you have it as a child? My son that has epilepsy, actually, as soon as he was born, he had seizures. And so, uh, and then, you know, and then he didn't have fever. Uh, he had seizures again later, like when he was two, but he had fevers. And then he didn't have fevers and he have, was having them. And that's when they diagnosed him with 
epilepsy. So the etiology is very important when determining if it's epilepsy, which would be a 345. And they can also use EEG readings to determine if it's epilepsy because they can tell what's going on in the brain. Now, for example, that always doesn't help because, you know, uh, my son who is diagnosed with epilepsy, so he has seizures for no reason, but he also has beautiful EEGs and he has a beautiful MRI. Uh, the the just so you know, the neurosurgeon told my son that he has a beautiful brain. So that's nice to know. But again, they have to put all of this information together to determine if you're a 3, 4, 5. Now, what about intractability? Now, if you don't know what that means, it means it's not easily managed, controlled, or solved. All right? So intractable seizures is something else that you have to determine uh, which would be that fifth digit so it would be a zero if it's without mention of intractable epilepsy if you didn't know backslash s is without and then one if it's with because backslash c is with if you didn't know intractable epilepsy so if it's intractable epilepsy uh, then that means it might be medication resistant so whatever medication they give you it doesn't seem to stop them the treatment resistant uh, refractory so they can go in medically surgically and do something to stop the the seizure uh, uh, having seizures poorly controlled they they just can't seem it's kind of think of it like diabetes an uncontrolled diabetic means that whatever they do whatever they do in the insulin and the diet and the exercise and everything they can't seem to get in control same thing here um, they have breakthrough seizures which means they'll go a long time without having a seizure and then all of a sudden for no reason they have another one or you'll also hear it uh, called exacerbation of seizures seizures so let's scroll down again to the next section and again, exciting stuff, but the terminology gets a little confusing because it kind of interplays with each other. So let's talk about 345 point something one, right? Because we have to have documentation to determine what that is going to be right after the decimal. Uh, recurrent seizures. What that happen, uh, What happens there is a patient with epilepsy who was controlled and then has had a return of seizures or rate of seizures has increased. So again, I can use my son as an example. You know, he went from you know being a newborn till he was two before he had a seizure again, and and they were able to say you know that was a febrile seizure, the first one that he had. Okay, but then you know he would go another whole year and not have any seizures when he got a little bit older and then he would have one out of the blue and that would be uh, a recurrent seizure you go a long period of time everything's great and then you have one and that can even mean if you're on medication again that's what my son will do he'll go a long period of time but ultimately now it's because he usually outgrows his meds or something but you have exacerbation of seizures and that term is used a lot in ERs um, uh, this physician was saying because they'll associate like an exacerbation of asthma they think of it as that same term so whenever you hear exacerbation of seizures like ah oh, okay that's that's how you can relate it and they have breakthrough seizures which is epilepsy patient who has not had a seizure for a long time then has one or it's a synonym for recurrent seizures all right so keep that in mind what about uh, repetitive seizures? That's coded to 780.30. So what, what you're doing there is you're having uh, several seizures in a short amount of time, right? And then um, and that, uh, again, repetitive seizures, they usually know something, something's going on. It's not controlled. In a patient with a history of ep epilepsy, that means they don't have it. They're not saying they have epilepsy uh, anymore. The common causes are usually something symptomatic that cause uh, a derangement of the central nervous system. So that could be an acute stroke and they have a seizure. They have a head injury, they have a seizure. Or things like withdrawal, acute alcohol withdrawal, that causes seizures. Um, so a patient with epilepsy, you're going to code 345 point something one. Okay, that's the code that you would have used that the person talked about at the beginning. Your person with epilepsy and they haven't had a seizure for a long time, but then they have one. It'd be a three, four, five point something one. Uh, then a non epileptic seizure, those do happen, all right? So, um, 
per, uh, paroxysmal uh, behavioral spells that resemble epileptic seizures. That happens. And again, you think it's a seizure, but it's actually not. Uh, you may need to, the only way you may be able to find out is to do, um, they said you could do video monitoring of an EEG to determine whether it was actually an uh, epileptic seizure or a non-epileptic seizure. And the causes for those is um, could be a cardiac reason. People could faint. They could have dysarrhythmias. Um, what about their endocrine system? You have a, a, a person that gets hypoglycemic. They definitely, it's likely that they could have a seizure. And sleep uh, disorders. If a person has sleep apnea, they can have seizures. They're not epileptic, but their body is, uh, they're, you know, no sleep, it screws with your brain, and you're going to have a seizure. And people who have REM or REM sleep uh, behavior disorders, um, they have been known to have seizures. It's, it's common for them. So um, again, when you put this all together, if you have a patient that is epileptic, right, and then they have a seizure, the code, the proper code is going to be one of those um, 300 codes, that 345.x1, because they've probably not had a seizure for a long time, and then they have one, like a recurrent seizure. And so, uh, oh, oh, there's a couple more there. I forgot. Neurological tics, um, and that is uh, frontal temporal dementia. That can make people, it can look like uh, epilepsy, and psycho, uh, psychological, like panic attack or autistic behavior. Well, see, my son is epileptic, but he's also autistic. So, you know, there, there you have to really pay attention uh, to sometimes, since we know what his seizures look like, that when um, people are autistic, some of them will have staring, you know, they'll stare off or, or have movements that are repetitive that, you know, in a person that wasn't autistic, it would not be normal. And so, therefore, it could be a, a seizure. But with them, it would not show up. So the last thing, acute symptomatic seizures versus late onset epilepsy. Real quick, early seizures after acute uh, brain derangement, you know, like we have a stroke or something, after, uh, let's say, our, a, a symptomatic of a disturbance of a brain function, so something happened in the brain, that's where you get into, you know, maybe they had a brain injury or, again, maybe they have a, a tumor, you know, not, not saying that that's a possibility. Don't think if you have a seizure, you got a tumor. Um, does not predict development of epilepsy in the future. Okay, so if you have early seizures or one of these, it's just an acute symptomatic seizure. That doesn't mean that you've got epilepsy or you're going to get epilepsy. Now, if you have seizure that's uh, seizures that are later, uh, beginning weeks to a year later after something happens, uh, they represent a development of epilepsy as a late effect. And um, the codes that you're looking there, there's three main codes that he suggested which are common, which is 907.0, late effect of injury to the nervous system. That would, you know, cause a seizure. Uh, 438.9, unspecified late effect of cerebral vascular disease. Again, you could have epilepsy. Uh, 139.0, late effect of viral encephalitis. And then you could get um, uh, late onset epilepsy. So the uh, seizure for later, those things, yeah, could possibly turn into epilepsy. But early seizures uh, at those top three, not just because you had them, you're not going to have epilepsy per se. So I think that's it. I think that summed it up. So it, it really is fascinating, and it's real easy to get those terms confused. But if you do a little study and a little research, then and make notes in the tabular of your manual, and that'll help you as well around those codes. Do you need more medical certification training? Go to www.cco.us. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for updates.